lecture, lecture four. And this here is probably the quickest lecture to get through because it's purely demos and purely stuff I can't prepare for. It's also probably the most error-bound lecture I'll give because there is no guidance. First, I just want to run through some quick slides to demo what I'm going to be talking about and then I'm going to get out of PowerPoint and go ahead and do some fun stuff with PHP. So the first thing that we're going to do is create, use a simple content management system to manage a website page. It's basically going to be a PHP script that I found a while back, and the idea of it is to modify text files, and then your website's going to just read in a text file using PHP, display it to the page. So a very rudimentary um, system to edit your website, but it does help um, make it easier for people who don't need a lot of a website, but still want something to manage it with. Also, I'm going to go over a contact form again, but this time with Apache, which is the image you typically see it on the forms. It's kind of a reverse string test, meaning that it tests to make sure that the user entering information into a form is a human and not a robot. And this is where we prevent spam bots from completely overloading your website, which emails you, and stuff like that. So we'll make a simple contact form and a program that can catch up and show how that works. Um, an email program using MySQL, I kind of decided against doing this fully, but um, I'll still go over the concepts inside of it because I think they're important to modeling what object-oriented PHP is all about, and it's a fairly simple program compared to WordPress. We're also going to cover a screen cap gallery with PHP, which is use the power of website that's currently up and online gets about 20,000 hits a month. And finally, we're going to do a WordPress deployment. So um, before I even get to the thanks slide, because this is an over, um, let's start first with the admin script. So in PHP, we have, <coughs> and this here will be posted to the lecture website after the lecture is done, hopefully within a few hours. But basically, this is a script that I found quite a while ago that basically allows me to modify text documents on a website. So essentially, there's only one configuration parameter that you need to know to make this web, web script work, and that's the file variable. And that basically is a full path to the directory where all your text files are going to be that we're going to edit. So this starts with the root directory, and then you go into your home directory, typically slash home slash your username, and then wherever the files are located, there is no trailing slash. So if you don't know links file permissions, that's fine, but there it is, that's going to be the real directory that we use. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload this to the web lecture site that we have already established. So basically, public HTML, then we're going to go into WebLock. Then inside of here, I'm going to create a new directory. And this directory is going to be called admin. Then inside of the admin directory is where I'm going to place the script. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in. If I can drag it into the right program. So basically, it uploads the file. Files fill is a little slow because it opens up a new connection for each file. We'll cover that a little bit more with WordPress. But basically now admin.php is loaded. And the other thing is, is that we had a data directory that we specified in the script. So basically I'm going to create the data directory. And then inside of it, I'm going to make an empty text file. So basically on Windows you can go to new and then text document. It'll make a new document. I'm just going to name it um, IND. Um, doesn't really matter what you name it. Inside of it, I'm going to put hello world, since that'll be something easily distinguishable to show that this is working. So now we have hello world and text file. What we're going to do is simply upload to the data directory. So now we have an index file or some sort of text file in the data directory that our script can access. 
So webelect.famouspro.com slash admin, and it's going to give us a directory listing, and we'll go into the admin.php script. And with Babelock, it will load. Okay, which it did. Just take a few seconds. The wire list is probably slow. But notice how it lives inside the ad directory for all the text files. And that's all the script does. So notice that there's only one script in there, like we had place. So we're just going to open it. It opened up the file, and there's the text inside of it. I'm just going to quickly append something new to it. So I'll type in hello again, for example. And then I'm just going to save the changes in there. The file is saved. It's been saved to the directory. And now our website. Now it's time to go into PHP and make it echo out the contents of IDB.caps. So the idea of doing this is quite simple. We're going to traverse back up the directory to index.html. And then if I can find it here, I'm just going to open it up in the PHP Designer. There's our index file. And now we're going to figure out, well, where the heck is our text? It's around this area here. So I'm just going to open up some new PHP tags. And then I'm going to give it how to get the data. So from earlier on, I did make a text file with the correct thing to add there. So, what we're going to do is just copy and paste to make this go a little bit quicker. Basically what this does is first, every new line character in the file is going to be changed to a VR or HTML format. And then we're going to hit close, meaning we're going to take out all the extra spaces, and then we're going to get the file. And basically this here, read in the file, then close, We'll then change file into HTML useful stuff. And then we'll change the enters to um, enters for HTML. And then we'll echo out whatever the string is. So fairly simple text editor. And now we save this here, but it's still in HTML. So index.html won't be parsed by PHP. So instead what we need to do is save it as index.php. So we save this index.php. Here it is on my desktop. And basically what I'm going to do is delete the old index.html and put index.php there. So now index.php is our main page. So that when you go to the website, web.famousville.com, the one thing I wanted to say was Notice how it initially didn't do anything. Unfortunately, your web browser caches information. So it might require a couple refreshes, or maybe even a control refresh to get your website to fully refresh the page so that your new PHP script is loaded. The next thing I see is file data slash index on text. You feel like to open the string. PHP when it has yours. And the new version will give you something that looks a little bit nicer and it'll tell you where the error is. So I know that index.php y48 is where the error is. So let's fix that here quick. So I'm, I'm in the text file imd.txt, which is why the error is being thrown. Now what I'm going to do is just re-upload the file. If I can get to it. So I will overwrite the file. I'll go back to the website. I'll refresh a couple of times. And here we go. Hello, wrote hello, read from the text document. If you don't believe me that it's dynamically sourced from this file, we'll go back to this text header and we'll open the file again. <coughs> this time we'll put CSE 111 since I'm the PA for it. Now we can save it. We can come back to the website, we refresh. CSE 111 is put there. Not I'm fairly sure why it's taking a while to load the images. I'm guessing the wireless is slow to me. Um, so 
So basically, that's a room they treat Kaiser. But notice, where the heck did I enter a password to get to this? Oh wait, I didn't enter a password to get to it. It just loaded. And this is the next point that I want to make. Whenever you're making something that allows your website to be edited like that by anyone, that's a really big security vulnerability. So this here it deals with HTTP access files, which I briefly skimmed over last time in sacred time. Um, so this time what we're going to do is physically make an HTTP access file that limits access to the script. So the first thing <coughs> we're going to do is we should probably open up them, which is my favorite text editor. So give me a moment while I load this. Here, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that you can see it. So we'll go with size 18 font for the moment. So I'll log in as famous Bill, and then I'll change to the public HTML slash web black directory. And here we are. For HTTP access files, we have to be in the directory where we want to limit access to the file. So I'm going into the admin directory, and I'm simply going to do them.htaccess. access. In Linux, any file that starts with a dot is hidden by the file system, which means that Apache will not serve the files. These files, even though they're in your web directory, cannot be served by Apache. Therefore, the user will never see the contents of these files. And that's only for .dot files. So basically, I'm going to insert some gibberish here that I will explain in a moment into the HTAccess file. So basically, the first line there, although it's probably really hard to see, that might help is off user file. And this basically points to a new file, also a dot file, typically HTTP password, which is your password file. And that file there will contain an encrypted form of your password that's going to allow access to the website. And that's an off type basic, which means we don't want to do any fancy authentication. We just want this good prop for a password and username. Off name, admin script access, that there is basically what do you want the screen that says enter your password to stay or the area that you want to gain access to. Require valid user means that we need a valid user <coughs> to type in their username and password in order to access the script. So, and actually this here will protect the inferior directory. So I'm going to save this now, colon wq for them. And then I'm also going to them.h password. In this file, what we're going to do is create a new password. Um, just a website that I found off the top of my head. It's very easy to do this with a Google search. I put some others up last time. So basically, this site here prompts you for your username and your password. You saw this last time. I'm not adding salt to the password. So, my username, I'll use Phil, and my password, I'll just use test. And I'll submit it, and it will give me a single line with my username, colon, and then whatever the encrypted form of my password is for the HT password file. Now, it is my job to copy this entire line, go back to the terminal, and paste that line in. One username and password combination per line in the HTTP password file. And then I'll simply write and quit that. Now I go back to the website and I try to access the admin directory. It prompts me for a password. So like I said before, my username is Phil, my password is pass. And it lets me in. If I don't know that, it won't let me in. I won't be able to modify my website. That's HTTP password. Um, access in a nutshell. You can also use PHP sessions to achieve the same basic concept using PHP informants. But HTTP password works on the server side, which means that your PHP script will never execute. Sometimes it's a little more secure, especially for admin areas. 
So with that, are there any questions about this before I move on to the contact form? Okay, so moving on to the contact form is the next thing that's fairly simple to do. So basically what we need to do is we need to create a contact form that is somewhat secure and prevents scam bots from spamming our, our website. So let me see here if I can quickly find where I'm at. So basically, I've pretty much pre-made the contact form because they're pretty standard. Not sure if I can really make that bigger, but um, we'll go on with what we have here. So basically, in PHP contact forms, like we did last time, it's very simple. At the top, we have some PHP code that accepts the get parameters or the post parameters or however your form is posted to the page. And then at the bottom, we have the form itself. So the bottom of the page here is all your HTML that's simply going to contact or simply going to post to the form page. So in this case, I posted contact.php question mark mode equals mail. And mode is a gate parameter, and the value that we set it to is mail. And then I have some very simple things I ask the user for. Your name, your email, your subject. And then enter the code that you see in the image. And the image part is a little bit trickier to get to, because to get the image, what we need to do is call this page and have PHP take a random number and then convert that into an image that a script can't read, because remember, we can't read images with computers unless we use lots and lots of artificial intelligence algorithms. So if we can't read it in image directly, it makes it much harder for a spam bot to spam us. So basically what I do is I create a new mode called IMG that produces an image. And now I want to get the code that actually produces the image. So basically when I come into the PHP script, I look at whatever mode is and I set it to switch. And then I use a switch for two cases, image and mail. If image happens to be whatever it is, what I do is I have PHP generate image from a random number, here's some random numbers here, and basically through a lot of stuff that I don't fully understand anymore, it basically creates an image that we can use to verify that the user is indeed human, and it sets the image to a session so that we can access it, or rather cookies, sorry. Um, for mail, what we do is we take in the parameters, we do some standard on or whatever, sanitize them. And then this function here is depreciated in favor of period replace, replaced, which I just noticed. So basically, when we change it to period replace, replaced, we have the same regular expression. And then if we know that this is an email address, we'll return true, and then we'll continue through, and we'll eventually mail the message out. And we also validate that the image box is um, good. So basically here, okay, I see that I use the salt here. So this value here basically takes the MD5 of whatever we enter, and then I have a constant salt here which I can predict so that the user just can't look at the cookie. They also have to look at this here, so they actually have to know how to type it in. And through some other magic, we access the cookie that's stored the um, code that we originally generated. If they match, we basically set the cookie to come up or unset it, and we set it to send so that we can send the message off and everything's good. Of course, this form doesn't directly email anyone anymore because I took that code out. It's kind of out here, but other than that, not much to it, and it works. You can examine it on your own, and if you have questions, you can specifically. So putting this form up on the website is really simple. Once again, drag, drop. It's a great way of doing everything. And I will overwrite the existing one up there. So now we have a contact form. So 
So we go to contact.php and here's the code sprinkled with some random dots on it so that it makes it harder to read for a computer. It's easy for a human to distinguish it. It's a 7738. And that there is a Apache in a nutshell. Um, so moving on, I just want to show what a class looks like using the Mailer program and then a screen cap website after that. So with the email program, which will also be pasted to the, or posted to the website, first I want to show you a real website that already has this. So scsemail.org. website here is one I programmed a long time ago for a movement I no longer belong to. And basically this is a form that allows you to email lots and lots of executives at Disney to bother them and hopefully get a show back from hostile time. I'm sure that the website's moved into other stuff by now. But basically on this side we have the form, we have the catch up, and then we have the submit them. And basically the idea of this is we wanted to know how many people are sending messages to Disney. So what my task was to write a program that could make this form, make it easy for the user to submit to a lot of people, make it easy for an admin to go in and add names and email addresses and titles, and also tell us how many people are actually using the script so that we know the website isn't completely a joke and unused. So, when I first tackled this problem, I had to come up with a way to easily decouple the code to make this work right. So basically, I use sessions for the administrative area. Once again, I don't really have the admin plugin anymore. I just know that it works. But here's a require one statement that I wanted to kind of get into, and that requires a file, configuration.php. So, Let's open that up, and basically config.php has a lot of live information in it that makes our website work. And when we start configuring WordPress, we're going to find that in most programs that we get off of the internet have one of these files. And they're also well documented with comments, and then we have lots of stuff here. And then eventually we start constructing stuff, and in my case, I decided to make the configuration file class at the time, I was just starting to learn classes. Not totally required, but basically I wanted this to be a class so that I could easily get to stuff inside of the class or the file without having to call it every time. So I could make this class global using a singleton design pattern, which is basically, in PHP, the singleton is a little bit simpler than in other languages. So, the idea of a singleton is in your entire program, you have one script that's constant. So there's one class that's instantiated throughout the entire program, and you can get to it from anywhere. So what we're going to do then is we can make it easy to access the variables. And through that, I can access the script anywhere in the program, and it would make it really easy to call functions and get values if I need configuration. And that was basically all I really wanted to explain about this program before I moved on because it was a long time ago when I wrote it and I don't honestly remember a lot about it now because it's been so long. So moving into a program I made not too long ago is the Screencaps program. So another website, strangely still related to Disney, about. And basically, they wanted a program that could, gener that could archive lots and lots of screen captures that could be impossible to show. So basically, a website system where for every episode, somebody went through and they took screenshots every three seconds of the screen. And what my program does is it goes through and it loads each one of these screenshots and figures them out in patterns so that they're in order. And all you have to do is drag the pictures to the directory and it would automatically know that they're there and it would load them and it would put them into picture box boxes. So I just wanted to do a mini demo, not as intensive as that, 
with a much smaller program before I moved into WordPress <coughs> in hopes that it kind of helps make WordPress a little bit easier to understand. So if I can find it here, there should be a file someplace on my computer. Probably not here anymore. There it is. Called Caps. Yep. So basically in my Caps gallery, I have lots and lots of scripts here that make screen captures work. First thing I wanted to do was save it in PHP while more in Linux. One of the biggest problems I had when I was writing the script was getting the images to show up in order. And that's because with Linux, if you had one and then 10.jk, two image files starting with one, it would order one then 10, then 100, and then we'd go to 2, 20, 21, so on and so forth. So it would go in alphabetical order almost for numbers instead of numerical order. And it took me a long time to figure out how to fix that. And the trick was to use a special image sorting algorithm in PHP called ksort, which sorts by numbers. So in PHP, you can usually sort, and now sort alphabetically, but if you want to use numbers to sort, you've got to do a case sort, And that will fix your problems in PHP. Once again, this is a class. Um, these here can be thought of instance variables, or variables that are accessed through the entire class. And then notice how it color this. This shows up, and it can access the instance variables. So small images is this, small images. And PHP, that's basically how we do, um, how we work with classes. And then we have functions, which are all assumed to be private functions, I believe. Um, they might be public, I'm not sure anymore. Um, so basically, that's all I really wanted to show about this script. I just wanted to upload it. And it'll be on my website as an example. So what I want to do is I want to create a new directory called img. And inside of that, I'm going to drag and drop all this. And what we're going to find out is it takes a long time for this to upload. And <coughs> WordPress, WordPress is 4,000 files. We don't want to sit around for ever waiting for WordPress to upload. So what we typically do is we zip up the files on our local computer. We upload the zip archive, which is one single file that we can upload all at once. And big files tend to upload much quicker. And then we can use a zip command on the server to unzip it. So now that the gallery is in place on the website, I just want to show that it works and then move on. So slash ing. Here it is. It automatically figures out that there's only 10 images in the directory. Those were pre-made. So we click on them. Shows the images. When you click on an image, it makes it nice and big. So not much to it. Really easy script to understand. Object oriented, PHP. So other than that, that's all I have to say about the screen cap script. And now comes the fun part with WordPress, which always seems to be a pain when I do something with that. So before I do that, I want to delete pretty much everything in here. Because WordPress is going to pretty much do that for me. Remember that it takes quite a while for HTTP to do stuff because it has to connect to the server and do each command separately. There is no wild current character that does everything all together. So the first thing for WordPress deployment is we go to WordPress.org. And then a nice fancy website loads and it tells us download WordPress. And all we have to do is download either the zip file or the tar.gc file. I'll stick the zip. And it downloads. Now it's on my local computer. <coughs> so I'll go to my downloads. And then I'm going to just extract it on my computer. Notice how long it takes. It's about 4,000 files. So even locally it takes a while. And once it extracts, we go into it and we see that there's other directories. So that's 
going to present from the unzip on the server. So I like to get the crumbs out of the way by zipping in such a way that I can just unzip into the directory where I want it to be eventually. Um, so nothing too big about WordPress or too much to say about it. It's a lot of files, it's a lot of code, and the source for WordPress, I would recommend staying far away from it because it's a mess, but it works great. So I'm just going to re-zip it up. Notice how I just right-clicked on any gram of file and went to compress, and here's my new compressed folder that won't have any directory structure in it that'll screw me up terminal. So I'm just going to call this WP, and then I'm going to upload it to the site. So, go back into WebLock here, and we'll drag it in, and we'll wait for it to upload. Notice how quick the single file uploaded with lots and lots of files in it. Now we go to the terminal, and this is probably where you want to know a little bit about the terminal usage. So I'm going to remove style.php. Not sure why it's there. It's style.css. Probably FTP can't remove them. RM hyphen capital R lowercase f space directory will remove it directory. And then ls we have wp.zip. I'm just going to type in unzip space wp.zip. Have completion and that's it's the WordPress installation to the server. So the hard part is done pretty much. WordPress is up on the server's directory. So I'll remove wp.zip now since I no longer need it. And now we have lots of directories here. We go to the main web page. Now what we need to do is go through the WordPress visitor. And I know that I'm missing the MySQL stuff, I'll get to it. So create a configuration file, just click it. Then it says, I'm going to need a database. Well, for WordPress, MySQL is the only database that it accepts that I'm aware of. So what we need to do is go into cPanel. And log in using my website account. Now if they let you let me in, yeah. Now we come down to the MySQL page. And we have a MySQL database section. So it gives me my list of um, databases. I only have one that's about five megabytes big. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new website called Famous Build Test. So I just create the database. Goes ahead, creates on the server, and then it tells me it's done. Um, nothing eventful there. I'm also going to make a new user famous folk pass, and I'm going to give it the pass for a pass. And notice, oh, um, pass ing. Let's do so. Let's add the ing to it. Just make it easy. Oh boy, password string things. Okay. Well, database passwords typically should be strong. So I'm just going to have to generate one. I'll copy it down for the time being. So I will copy this to a safe place. Me, I'll find a text file someplace on my computer. And then I will go back to this and I'll have it create the user. We have a user and we have a database, but they still aren't combined. So what we do is we come down here to add user to database. Notice how they're both selected correctly. We just add, and then we get the user all privileges on that database. Then we make the changes. Now, Famous Field Test has access to Famous Field Test. <coughs> Purely simple. Um, and now we're ready to go back to the WordPress deployment. So now we come back. Let's go click on that. That asks me for the database name, Famous test and famous ph test the password like we had before which is a copy paste thing and localhost is our data server localhost means it's on the same server as wordpress is running on some hosting companies split up mysql if that's the case they will tell you so and they will tell you 
what the host of the database server is. That can also be an IP address. When you set up that host at load that one will work there. And cable prefix and MySQL databases, WordPress accounts for, but what happens when we want mobile WordPress installations on the same database server under the same database? So we prefix everything so that we can keep track of the tables that are in the database. And those sometimes limit your MySQL databases, so that helps you get around that. Submit the form. WordPress says it's ready to go, so we click run and install. It inserts a lot of stuff into the database, and then it asks you for your site title. Um, I'm just going to go with Love Lecture Series. And username of admin is fine. Um, let's see if testing will work. Yep. And finally, my email. If I want an email from it, I can enter my email there. And finally, WordPress has stuff in it. Robots that pass it on advice to allow Google and other search engines to search the website. So if you check this, it'll put in the correct parameters into those files. So it'll allow your block to be searched by search engines. If you uncheck it, it will not allow your block to be searched. So now finally, let's install WordPress with those parameters. And tells me that my password is set up. So log in, so admin testing will use, and it will let me into WordPress. Here's your black and interface. Really nice, really, really nice um, for a developer. So the next thing that I want to do immediately is explain what plugins are. Plugins are extensions on top of WordPress that makes WordPress work nice and give certain things that you might not get out of core functionality. For example, image galleries, there's a really nice thing called NextGen that you can install word in WordPress, so it'll give you a nice image gallery, which makes WordPress a really nice content management system. But this app piece map here, or whatever it is, is a spam control software, and I strongly recommend you install it because otherwise, when Google and spam bots find your site, you're going to spam the hell out of it, you're going to have 30,000 comments in one night that you're going to have to deal with. Um, XSAT is really easy to activate. All you do is you click activate and it makes the plugin work. Although, with this, you have to register with their website and enter in a key that's free so that they know that you're using it and so that they have an idea of who's using it and how good their product is. Stuff like that. So I'm going to go back to plugins and disable it. And now I'm just going to point out how easy it is to get a plugin from the internet. So let's say if we want a new plugin. We go to add new, and I'm not really sure what a good plugin is off the top of my head, but let's just type in Twitter here because I know that there's a lot of Twitter to WordPress plugins. Let's say we want something from Twitter, and this here basically gives us a Twitter widget that displays our tweets on the sidebar of our WordPress installation <coughs> or one of these boxes. So basically, here's how easy it is to install. We click on Install Now and OK. Install it. And now, if we want to activate it, we can click on Activate, and there it is. It's activated, and typically plugins are under settings or tools down here. So we'll go into them, and on the side here, we look for something that deals with Twitter. Hmm, I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, I know why. Because it's a widget, it's going to be in the appearance under widgets. So basically, Twitter will be a new thing here. Twitter VCK. Basically, what we can do to add a widget to our page, and we'll get into theming a little bit, so we just come over here and we drag it in. And there we go, Twitter here, then we can save. And it gives us lots and lots of options, and most plugins are like this. So, in case you don't know what a widget is, let's go to the main website now. The main website looks like this. And down at the bottom, all of which is a little panel with text in it that comes after everything else. So I drag Twitter into the bar, it shows up on the page, pretty much a drag drop operation. And WordPress is mostly drag drop for the administrator. That makes things really, really easy. Now, let's say we want to change the title bar or this nice little picture here. 
WordPress has functionality in most themes. They're professionally made for it. It allows us to go to appearance. Background, of course, will allow us to change the background of each header. Will allow us to change the header image. So we can change it to whatever we want. So we can just click on it, pretty much, or upload our own. Save the changes, and sure enough, everything's dynamically made from WordPress. Really, really nice. And finally, before I get into theming, we have a sample page here. So in WordPress, we need pages on our website. So how would we do that? Well, we add pages. So in the WordPress admin area, there's a pages link here. And then we can add a new page, or we can modify an existing one. And then we can just do about me, maybe, and this is my about me page. And if I didn't mention this before, you can do this from Microsoft Word using XML RPC, which is assigned under settings. And if you enable that, you won't even have to leave Microsoft Word to edit anything on your website. And Word and WordPress go hand in hand. So now with this, I'm just going to publish the page. Nothing really specific about it. But now, notice, this is my about me page. Post it here. And finally, what we can do is we can go to the website, refresh it. Notice how the about me popped up dynamically. This theme allows that because it's the default when it's all thought out. And then this is my about me page. And since I'm logged in as an admin, I can edit it. I can modify comments if I want to get rid of comments and make it into a real web page. Whatever. So WordPress is really, really nice as a content management system because it dynamically does everything. So moving on, I want to get into a little bit about how we theme WordPress and then I'm going to be done. So for theming WordPress, we have a directory that's typically under Let me refresh this quick. WP content themes, and then whatever the theme is. So 2010 is the default theme. If you need to update WordPress, it's just a click and update, and it'll always overwrite this folder. So if you're going to start with a theme like 2010, I suggest copying it to a new folder. And then inside of the theme, we have a lot of files. And WordPress themes are pretty extensive and they have lots and lots of files. What I typically do is I strip it out and I start with my own default theme for Famous Hill and then I build up from there. My theme doesn't include the dynamic pages that expand because I kind of statically define all the pages I use across because they're all done using Photoshop. Um, so one quick thing that I forgot before I move into showing my theme and how it works is Notice how we have page ID equals 4. Remember the HD access stuff I talked about last time that WordPress does this automatically for you? Well, if we go into our WordPress admin account and we come down to settings, we're going to default use the P equals method. Well, typically WordPress blocks together. If you've ever gone to them, have really search engine friendly names like this here, like the date and then the post name. So I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to use the day and name or month and name. So I'll save the changes and now it wrote into an HE access file. If you want to see what it looks like, we've got HE access. WordPress automatically adds a bunch of stuff that makes your URL look nice. Which is nice for the programmer and the admin and even the end user with WordPress. So now when we go to the About Me page, it changes to About Me. So now that URL is a lot friendlier for search engines. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I'll just drag it down a little bit, but a lot friendlier than question P equals whatever the page ID is. So moving back in, let's go through a WordPress theme that's somewhat simple. So all WordPress themes start with index.php. And 
an idea is, is that we call a method called get ahead of it in all WordPress themes. And basically what that does is that loads the header.inc file or header.php. Um, it includes the header.php file on that. So there's a function in WordPress that sanitizes everything, and that's called get header, and it echoes out your header and whatever's in there. If you want to see what the header looks like, it's basically the one from the previous lectures. It's like on a famous film. So it's just the dot type. Um, and then we have some cool stuff that WordPress does that other things don't. So let's see here if I can kind of get this over so I can see more of it. Oh, that's nice bit. Okay, well, that's nice. Let's see if we can kill this off here. Okay, so let's reload the PHP Designer. Even when you pay for software, it still doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And this is one of the many programs that mimics that. So when I go into header here, and I move this over, basically with WordPress, there's a lot of predefined functions. And there's a website called Code called the WordPress Codeheeks, and you can get there from Google. <coughs> WordPress Codex, basically what it does is it has all the documentation for installing WordPress, programming WordPress, making plugins, all that kind of stuff. So that's where you go when you have a question about WordPress. But this plugin phone name basically returns the name of the blog that you specified when you installed it or the name of the settings. Mm -hmm. um, it's from page um, for my blog. Um, the front page should say famousville.com, nothing more. But if I have a sub page, I want the title to be slightly different. To do this, there's an is front page function, which will tell you if it's the front page to your website. And then I just echo out whatever the post title is. And if you ever go to my website, you will notice that indeed that is the case. So when you go to famousville.com, the title of the page, although Chrome doesn't really do a good job at showing it, it's just famous for the blog and more, which is defined in the signs of my blog. Now, if I go to a sub page, like About Me, it has the About Me like we had before, but when we go to it, it does colon, colon, space, and then the page name. So it's basically drafted from there. I also use that function to get the information for this tab to place it conveniently. So moving back into the code, the next thing is there's several things about links and then metadata that's for your website. So what I typically do is I have a content type and encoding, and all of WordPress does is it returns what the encoding is dynamically, so I can change the language in WordPress's control panel and be able to make the website go through correctly. Um, another thing is there's alternate links for RSS feeds, Adam feeds, and um, paint bags. A paint bag in WordPress land means that another website, if somebody else is running WordPress, what they will do is if you post a comment with your website link or something, or they post somebody else's website, WordPress will automatically notify the website through the paint bag if it exists that, hey, I need this link to you, you might want to know about it, and WordPress will let you know if somebody else blogs about it or posts a link on your website. So it's really cool and really easy to make work. This JavaScript here is for Google Analytics. If you want to know more about your website, because they put the stats isn't always great, you can go to Google and they'll give you some code here, JavaScript, that will give you nice little graphs on your service. I believe it's google.com slash analytics. And then the same stuff I made in lecture two. So moving on, here's the 
here, I'm going to go back to index. My index page does something really easy. First, I get the header, and then I close stuff to the block. Um, and then in WordPress, there's this concept called sidebars. And these are dynamic. And remember the parents thing where I drag and drop Twitter in? Basically, that's a dynamic sidebar. And when we call this function for viewers and PHP using the theme, what happens is this dynamic sidebar calls whatever it generates it, and that makes um, the panel on the left or wherever you put it on your page. So that there's a dynamic sidebar for the left. Um, how can we make special panels to put on the sidebar? Those are done through a file called functions.php. Basically, functions.php, we can do a lot of things. In WordPress, we have actions and hooks, and basically those allow us to hook on to certain WordPress functions like WP header or get header or whatever, and it allows us to change properties of them. So that's mostly in the WordPress documentation. It's a little advanced, but I had to do this to make my WordPress blog look decent with my theme. So that's basically what I do. I turn all these functions off. And then finally, we have register sidebar, which creates a dynamic sidebar. And we get it the name left, and then we just get it some other crap that is set to blank. It's done in the form of an array. So before which it needs whatever stuff is going to be printed for, what's after it. And then there's also room for titles on widgets. And then, want to see the code that makes a widget. I actually have a couple widgets I make, but the main one is called a side widget, or a small widget. And basically, this small widget is something like partners. So that's the code that generates that partner screen here, where we have a title, and then we have a bunch of stuff that's related to the WordPress sidebar. Um, while I'm at it, why don't I just show you? So if we go into the famous Phil WordPress panel, and hopefully I know the password. It's one of two passwords. Okay. And basically, notice it that I can update WordPress with a single click. It tells me if there's updates. And updates are really easy to do with WordPress, but they typically break your theme, which is why I usually don't do them live like this, so I won't. But when I go to Appearance, <coughs> and I go over to Widgets, I have something called a small widget that corresponds to the code. And the small widget basically shows that I mean it's on the left-hand side, and since I wanted it to be strictly HTML, that's why I have. Now, how do we make this in WordPress? Well, in our functions file, we create a new class called small widget that extends WP widget. And then there's a couple of things you have to do. First, you have to define what the class is in WordPress. And any kind of control panel is going to be in the admin area, as well as the name form for the admin area. And this is all documented, but then for your form, there's a function called form that basically is what the admin area is going to show when you go to it, and then you get lots of stuff for it. Then you have your update function, which is when you click the save changes in WordPress admin area. And finally, your widget, which displays the widget on the page. Um, notice that I don't use PRs in my code, so I use an L2BR, which is function that changes all my new line characters to break lines for HTML. And I also have a latest widget which goes and basically gets the latest blog post. Um, query post is how you do it. Show post equals one is a parameter that's sent into it, which basically returns the latest post. The post will print it out to the page. The parent link will print out the link to it. Notice how it's in href with a couple of great characters, and I even make the title of the post available. So, you go to my home page where the latest post is, it will show you directly that the latest activity is here, and it prints out the page neatly. 
Um, other than that, um, let's see if there's anything else that's worth mentioning. Um, finally, with making widgets and stuff with WordPress, you have to register it. And if you drop the same code into the plugins folder, that would create a plugin for you. And in theming here, WordPress themes are kind of unique, <coughs> and the style of that CSS file is where your theme information goes. At least it used to. Um, WordPress changed that apparently and didn't tell me. It used to be you went to your style.css file, and that would be where your theming information went. The total WordPress is the theme. Apparently, it doesn't exist anymore like that, so I I'll have to look that up myself. But page.php is the other interesting one. And basically, page.php is how all posts will look on your website. So basically, I do whatever I have to do to show the left sidebar and that there. And then I come out the post with the title and the content. And when you're in a post like page.php is, these functions here are automatically queried for you so that they show up. One last thing that I want to show from the control panel that will probably throw you off if I don't is in the control panel, to make a home page show up inside of your blog, what you need to do is you need to go to your general, you need to go to your reading page, I believe. And then your front page needs to be set to a static page. It'll give you a drop down for what page you want to set it to. And then from there you can save your changes and that becomes front page. So other than that, um, I don't really have anything else to show. Thanks for attending. It's been great doing this. And any questions for me? Okay, thanks for attending and have a good night.